Hey, how's it going everybody? Josh here with Desert Gardens Homestead. It's a beautiful day here out in the Sonoran Desert and I was debating on what I should do a video on today, what I should showcase for you, but I decided I just wanted to kind of do a walkabout and just show you some really neat things that I'm growing here in the landscape, things I just wouldn't ordinarily get to showcase on a video and just uh, show you some of the neat little things here that are often overlooked and just kind of give you a glimpse at the property itself. It would really be hard for me to do a uh, garden walkthrough step by step. I just have so much here, uh, but maybe I can just do some highlights from uh, different sections of the landscape and uh, just give you a, a glimpse of, of what I've got here at Blue Gecko Gardens at the Desert Gardens Homestead. So hang tight. So here we are at the north side of my house. And this is where I have my north side jungle here. Some Texas Rangers for some cover color. I have my bananas. Huge mullein plant here. Look at the flower stalks on that guy. Isn't that pretty? I have a rose bush trying to emerge there. Beautiful Texas Ranger in flower. Isn't that gorgeous? I have a low quad emerging there. Another loquat right beside it, under some shade, little guys. Have a large Nagami kumquat right here, reaching heights of eight going on nine feet maybe. Beautiful tree. Beautiful bird, red bird of paradise, Mexican bird of paradise here, reaching heights of, oh, nine, 10 feet. And this is a Moro blood orange, reaching heights of about seven feet tall. Here is the Pakistan mulberry. I just planted it last year. It's already doubled in size, reaching heights of about eight feet, eight going on nine feet maybe. Just a little whip, but man, it sure sure likes that soil. Huge grapevine taking up that entire fence there. Going over to a white mulberry next to another red Mexican bird of paradise, and then an apricot tree. And as you enter the gate here, here is our front of the house with the flower bed. Here is a huge African sumac mature tree reaching heights of about 25 some odd feet. And underneath is our latest project. My wife and I are, we just constructed this fire pit, which turned out really nice. And I scored these wooden bench sets on Facebook Marketplace for an excellent price. And so we're going to go ahead and refurbish those. But this will be our front little relaxing area. And from the porch area, beautiful patch of lemongrass there, right next to a newly planted rose bush. And here are my other rose bushes, along with some of my bananas, going to my south facing wall over yonder. Beautiful champagne loquat in the distance there. Uh, Big Jim loquat trying to help get through the summer without it shocking and have a uh, Washington navel orange Eureka lemon in the background there really nice mix of uh, some cacti along with fruit trees have some pineapple guavas there have a centennial kumquat that's a really unique variety of kumquat it's a variegated leaf and a variegated fruit really neat specimen and this is a mulberry tree Take a look at this San Pedro cactus. Isn't this absolutely gorgeous? It's growing right up into a mesquite tree, reaching heights of about 15 feet tall. Just an absolutely beautiful cactus here. And as you can tell, I love my agaves, my tequila plants. And just on the backside of the San Pedro, I have some native dragon fruit. And it does produce these little red dragon fruit here, but the fruit is not very tasty. The birds absolutely love it, so that is why I grow it. It is excellent to grow some of these throwaway type fruit, these distractor fruit because they will distract birds from the fruit they actually care about. This is the dragon fruit and I'm allowing the dragon fruit also to take root within this mesquite tree. 
take a look at that swarrow. That swarrow, I put it in the ground right there where you can see maybe two feet up that joint. That is where I put it in the ground when I purchased it. And over 10 years, it's grown that upper portion. So it's actually grown quite a bit just because it gets supplemental watering here. But that is my swarrow, one of the few I've got here. I don't have any mature ones, but that's the largest one I have. Here is a Mexican fan palm, beautiful fan palm. It's only about five years old and already reaching heights of, oh, 15 some odd feet maybe, maybe even a little taller. And I just planted that San Pedro cactus right under it. So that San Pedro will grow up on this west side of the fan palm and will look really neat once that really takes hold. And here we are at the high density orchard. I have some 30 to 40 some odd fruit trees just in this center block area on the outer perimeter are all my fig trees. I have an Eliagnus autumn olive tree there as well. Take a look at this gold nugget, Loquat. Newly flushed out for the season. Absolutely gorgeous tree. Reaching heights of, oh, eight to nine feet. Beautiful, beautiful tree. The Moringa has since flushed out for the season and already reaching heights of about 12 feet tall here. The bottom half is pretty much devoured. Anything within arm's reach, I'm having to take limbs and pull them down. But I'm feeding chickens and goats Moringa each day. And so I think I have seven or eight Moringas here in the landscape. There's a smaller one right next door. There's a Miwa kumquat next to some Gumi berries. I have a Sweet Scarlet and a Carmine with a Thompson grape growing up on the chicken run. And that's a large mulberry. Now these are really cool. These are old hugel beds. I think these are about seven or eight years old now. I've got two of these. This is a 90 degree bed. And I've uh, planted annuals in them in the past, but at this point they've just sunken down. But man, they're just so fertile. And so I did a high density little hedgerow here uh, with a crepe myrtle. I've got a fig tree. I've got a um, spicy nectar plum. So that's a hybrid stone fruit. And a little citrus there on the corner with a pomegranate and another crepe myrtle. And so these will grow up. Look at that fig. It's just uh, maybe a year and a half, maybe two, two years, maybe in ground. Already reaching heights of five and a half feet tall. Just loves the fertile ground of these old hugel beds. Now since perennialized, I'll show you my other one. Here's the other hugel bed perennialized with some artichokes. But in between the artichokes, I have citrus growing. It's gonna be a, a navel, Washington navel citrus. I have a W. Mercot mandarin with a Nagami kumquat there. And then I had some purple tree collard that has since perished in our summer heat. But I think I'm gonna put another tree there. I actually also have a Majul date palm right there. And so he survived the winter accidentally weed whacked him uh, with the grass growing but he survived the weed whacking and is still growing so if you have the opportunity to make hugel beds and play around with hugel culture i highly recommend it it's a very very excellent way to make very fertile soil and even first year when you first make it it's just phenomenal everything in the hugel beds rocks with fertility and it just makes everything drought tolerant as well. It's a very neat system, especially for really arid locations like the deserts. Here's another look from the other side of the high density orchard. I have that GA866 jujube tree there with another pomegranate. That's a mandarin tree. Those are my kai or key apples. I prefer kai apple. That will be another Washington navel. That will be a mandarin. Here are goji berries. I have a whole bunch of these goji berry bushes all over the place. They are now leafing back out with our summer monsoon rains. And they are also flowering, so I should be getting gojis here pretty soon. Once they start fruiting, I'll do a goji video. I have a few different varieties of goji berry. Also grow wolf berry here, the cousin. That's actually the native berry. 
So I certainly appreciate you coming along with me, taking a look at a portion of the garden today. Showed you a couple neat things that I ordinarily wouldn't get to uh, showcase, especially the San Pedro cactus and a other couple neat things I've got growing on back here. Uh, but I'll do another one of these and I'll go through other portions of the landscape and maybe go through some of my uh, side yard jung jungles and show you uh, some of the various uh, trees and shrubs and, and other uh, edible things that I have growing on uh, throughout the landscape. So. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post those down below. If you have any topics that you would like for me to cover, uh, anything you have questions on or would like for me to showcase or do an expose on, feel free to uh, comment down below and let me know what you're interested in, whether it be garden related, homestead related, uh, different odds and ends. I would be definitely interested in knowing uh, what you're interested in, in seeing so I can make appropriate content for you. And if you uh, found anything of value in the video, or if it was entertaining in any way, I would surely appreciate you smashing that like button, as well as subscribing to the channel, and also sharing the channel and the video today, if you found anything of use, or would like to inform anybody else. And once again, I certainly appreciate you stopping in, and taking a look, and taking a look at the channel, as well as the video, and have a great day today. Thanks again. And take care. God bless. This is Josh with Desert Gardens Homestead. I am signing off and I'm out.